I think that Bitcoin is a million times better than gold and is going to gradually demonetize gold over time. So, no, gold will go to the utility value of gold, you know, whatever that utility value is. But uh, I don't think it's, uh, it's going to be adopted as money in the 21st century. I think Bitcoin is a better gold than gold. You can move it at the speed of light. You can see with the lightning network evolving that pretty soon we'll have a billion people able to, able to move any block of Bitcoin anywhere friction free. And so Bitcoin is uh, digital money for the 21st century. Gold was metallic money for the 19th century. So I just think if you believe in sound money, then you should do yourself a service and you ought to sell your gold and you ought to buy Bitcoin because Bitcoin is sound money for the 21st century and gold was sound money for the 19th century. It's just that simple. I think a great deal of the bad behavior has been flushed out. I don't think you can say everything. I think there's still a lot of um, unregistered securities in the crypto ecosystem. And it's undoubted that uh, Bitcoin is cross-collateralized against some of those unregistered securities. And uh, there's more regulation coming to, to anyone that's in this space, more clarity. So, so I, I think the worst of it is behind us, but I don't think that the industry has, has been clarified or completely rationalized yet. I think that there's thousands and thousands of cryptos that need to disappear. Right? I think there's a 99% rationalization rate that needs to happen. And so I just think we went, we went through um, an pretty important deleveraging. And I think the people will be much more careful in uh, the way they view things going forward uh, than they were uh, a couple of years ago. I think we were in a wild west stage the first decade of the industry. And, I think we need to grow. We need adult supervision in the industry, and um, there's an entire generation of people that need to understand counterparty risk and basic risk management, and they also need to understand the difference between a security and a commodity. And with all you know, due respect, there's still a lot of people that don't really understand the, 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 the ethical or legal difference between a security and a commodity. If you actually look at the performance of Bitcoin since we actually bought $250 million of it and embarked on a Bitcoin strategy, Bitcoin's up 101%. Uh, and uh, that's, the, the S&P's up 23%, the NASDAQ's up 15%, gold is down 12%, bonds are down 15%, and silver is down 28%. So in fact, Bitcoin smashed every single asset. The only thing that outperformed Bitcoin in that time period is MicroStrategy stock up 166%. So we actually performed 1.6x Bitcoin. Um, now, if you look at what we could have done, we could have uh, competed with the enterprise software companies in our industry. The best performing enterprise software company in that time period is Oracle. Oracle is up 39%. MicroStrategy is up 166%. IBM's up 2%. Salesforce is down 4%. SAP is down 40%. We're definitely not losing. Now, if you want to compare us to the best companies on earth, the strongest companies on earth that are more powerful than governments would be Google, Apple, and Microsoft. Those three big tech companies are up 58%, 46%, and 34% respectively. The company's strategy is working well. You know, we've been planning uh, to do this for four years. So I, I just think we got caught up in, uh, in some very colorful media. Uh, you may know, uh, most people don't. I'm the controlling shareholder of MicroStrategy. I have 68% of the voting shares. And I started the company 33 years ago. So I've been the CEO for 33 years. I'm the chairman of the board. I'm the controlling shareholder. And I've been talking about Bitcoin for two years. And about two years ago, we promoted uh, a gentleman, Fong Lee, to be the president of the company. And he was the president and the CFO. So he's been running the day-to-day -day business hands-on as the president for the past two years. And 99% uh, and of the activity of the business is selling software. So we have 2,150 people. We sell software, we make software, we have thousands of customers. We do thousands of transactions a quarter. We hire hundreds of people a year. 
We train thousands of people a year. All of the activity is enterprise software. It turns out that once a quarter we do a Bitcoin transaction. And I talk about it a lot. So if you think about it, you realize that, you know, it's very logical for the CEO of the company to be the person that actually manages the day-to-day -day business because all the transaction and, and all of the labor intensity is all about software. I don't need to be the CEO in order to oversee the Bitcoin uh, side of the business because I can do that as the chairman of the board and as the chair of the investments committee where we provide oversight for Bitcoin acquisition and maybe once a quarter we might do a big deal like borrow 200 million or issue equity or something or we might buy Bitcoin but it really is something that can be best supervised at the board level. I think that uh, the way to think about investing in Bitcoin is you should only invest what you're going to hold for four years or longer and ideally it's generational wealth transfer and then you should dollar cost average into it. So if you think of that and you say, I know I'm going to hold at least four years, then it isn't that anxiety inducing. If you have a short time horizon, like you, you want to make money in four weeks or four months, it's going to be much more stressful because it is a volatile asset. And it's, the volatility impacts two types of people. It impacts people that are short term investors that they want to make a quick buck or they just never want to lose money. And the volatility also impacts public companies or companies that rely heavily on gap accounting because the accounting, the volatility is detrimental to the accounting treatment because you have to always write it down. You can never write it up. And so you end up with a circumstance where you could be holding a billion dollars and it looks like you have $200 million and no one can tell the difference unless they go to the trouble to figure it out themselves and that's very opaque. So I would say the people that really are fixated upon gap optics right they'll they'll be uh, a little bit uh, troubled by it and then people that have very short term time horizons are troubled but but um, for the rest of the world it's a pretty good uh, idea it's the best I i've just pointed out to you we've outperformed every asset every big tech company every enterprise software company 97 percent of all the companies using this strategy so if you, the the volatility is the price you pay for the performance and if you can't stomach the heat, right, you can't be in the kitchen. So I, I would rather win in a volatile fashion than lose slowly. We've been in a recession since March of 2020. <laughs> if you estimated the economy based upon real output and then you adjusted it for the strength of the currency, if the currency loses 20% of its purchasing power and the economy is flat, then you contracted the economy by 20%. So the currency's lost 40% of its purchasing power in the past two years. If the economy grew 5%, you're down 35%. So yeah, we're in a recession, but you know, I'm not a macroeconomist and I don't, I don't really care to engage in the debate about what is the definition of a recession or not.